Hey everybody, welcome to episode number two of the Servo City Scoop. In this episode, we're going to start off with the new product segment. We're going to move over to tech tips. And we have a new segment after that called Bet You Didn't Know. And we'll end the show with a giveaway. So stick around to learn how you can win something. That's right. All right, today we're going to be talking about our servo-driven gear rack kits. Uh, these gear rack kits are from Gobilda, um, and we've actually had these for quite a while, but there's been a significant change, significant enough that we rolled it into the new products segment. Um, the thing that changed here is the servo that's driving the servo-driven gear rack kits, and it has like a domino effect on the performance. All of it good. Yeah, absolutely. So these new versions run at a free speed of about 60 millimeters per second. That's going to be at their maximum voltage of 7.4 volts. They'll go even faster if you're running on a peaked out 8.4 volts 2S LiPo. Um, and the most impressive part of these is they're going to push with a maximum thrust of 27 kilograms, which is about 60 pounds. Um, so these things are crazy. Um, and of course your speed ends up sort of being doubled kind of depending on where you're looking at it in the dual version. So this will move one rack in one direction, the other rack in the other direction. And of course your 60 pounds of thrust is going to be split up evenly between those two, just depending on where you're going to put load. It's faster than the previous version. It's stronger than the previous version. Uh, all steel gears, yep. higher resolution. Yep. It's smaller, so as you uh, are building and working this into your assembly, you have a lot more room under the servo and on the sides of the servo for screw heads and nuts. Um, everything about it is better. Uh, we didn't hike up the price, uh, so yep. yeah, we just passed those mm -hmm. benefits on to you. It's also a digital servo, which has a bunch of cool advantages, but primarily means that your torque is available very, very quickly and very close to your target position. With a lot of analog servos, if you're very near your target position, that ramp down is constant and very, can be much wider. So on digital servos, you get a lot of advantages besides all those increases in power. And if you decide to, uh, you know, break this apart for parts mm -hmm. after you use it um, and you just have the servo by itself, the servo also can operate as a continuous mode servo. So uh, it's super versatile. We love it and we hope you like the new changes. First time we ran the numbers and saw what this uh, gear rack kit was going to be capable of, we all kind of sat there and said, there's no way that's going to work. You can't yeah. put 60 pounds through a plastic gear rack, but we did and we did it on a, quite a few tests and it stood to the test. So we were really impressed with this thing, despite how versatile and easy to use it is. All right, now it's time for the tech tip segment of the video. Today, we're going to be talking about controlling brushed DC motors. As compared to other kinds of motors, brushed DC motors are very easy to make run. Uh, the most simple way is to simply plug it directly into the battery. Uh, just applying power, uh, DC power, of course, from battery or power supply will make your motor run. Uh, there are some drawbacks to this simple basic approach. Uh, you can't really control the speed that way. You can't uh, control the direction that it rotates that way. Mm -hmm. um, however, you can plug it in backwards and it'll rotate in the other direction. So that's kind of nice. You can't plug them in backwards or if you do, it's not going to blow anything up um, and it gives you an easy way to change the direction, but it's not a very convenient way to change the direction. Absolutely. So there are a couple of different um, control methods we're going to be talking about today. The first one is a double pull, double throw switch. And this is a switch that's going to go in either direction. In this case, it's momentary. So you can click it, and let go, it'll return back to center. And this will just switch the polarity of the power that's going to that motor. So we'll plug into the battery here and then plug into the motor. And the polarity here just doesn't really matter unless you want to say specifically when I go in this direction, run the motor this way. And we have really pretty convenient control of that motor. Now, right now we're just applying exactly the battery's voltage to the motor. We're just changing the polarity. Now, if we want to change the speed that the motor is running at dynamically, we will have to change that voltage that's going to it. A very convenient way to do that is a motor controller. Now these will change the average voltage by pulsing that on and off very quickly. Um, and the, they are sometimes very simple. Sometimes they can definitely be more complex, just depending on how many features you need out of your control system. So 
You can see we can go very slowly and then quickly ramp up the speed. Now, as you can see here, we're using one of the relatively new speed controllers on mm -hmm. our site. It's the Go build a single channel motor controller. Mm -hmm. um, and it's worth noting that when you're using a, a proper speed controller or motor controller, uh, it's while it does reduce the voltage in average, it mm -hmm. has more torque than reducing the actual voltage. Like if you had a rheostat mm -hmm. or a variable resistor of some sort, um, it's going to it's using the full voltage but in tiny pulses. So it's like hitting it with a hammer and you get as much torque or pretty near as much torque as if you were just plugging it directly into the battery. Right, the other thing you get with a motor controller generally is going to be uh, what's commonly referred to as a brake mode. When you plug the two leads of a motor into itself, you get a lot more resistance to that motor spinning. And the motor controller will do that when it's not applying any power to it. So you can very easily see that when I go and then stop. It'll stop right away. It uses that power to kick back and reduce the RPM. When I switch back over and just plug it in directly to power, um, we lose that very quick stop, that brake mode per se. And you can see it kind of much more slowly comes to a stop. This is most notable when you're driving mechanisms with a lot of inertia, such as driving your robot around. You may drift for a few feet before you come to a stop, which doesn't make things quite as controllable. Now, we do have a few other videos you might reference. On the product page of that particular motor controller, there's a nice overview video about that motor controller. Um, if you're looking for more advanced features, RoboClaws offer a ton of features and can take feedback from encoders and do mm -hmm. all sorts of things. Um, and uh, we did a video a few years back on the basics of how motor controllers work. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll drop a link in the description to that as well. I'm excited for this next segment. This we're calling Bet You Didn't Know. <laughs> and we just had some random, useful, odd things that we wanted to share with you. Um, so I'm going to go first, and Ethan has one as well. Mm -hmm. um, so this is something I did not know for a while, and a while back I was putting together a video on how channel mixing works on transmitters and receivers. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was deep into it, I was writing code to make the animation that we used in that video. We'll drop that link in the description mm -hmm. below as well. And um, I was talking to Kyle here, you've seen him in all our videos, and he said, hey, did you know that if you don't have mixing on your transmitter, you can you you can just turn the transmitter 45 degrees and and have mixing. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you got what? And he's like, yeah, yeah. So this is Kyle's tip. Props to Kyle for this. Um, so I'm going to show it to you on this uh, Go Build a Transmitter. Even though this has mixing, but if you're stuck with a transmitter that doesn't have mixing, and, and I have some at home that don't, they're meant for you know park flyers and things like that. Not you know sometimes they just don't have that feature. So uh, if you picture it like this, once, you know, basically you have two channels and this is controlling one channel on the receiver, left and right, right? And this is controlling another one up and down. So if I were to give the vertical channel here full power, I'd push it up, right? Like bottom zero, top 100, right? Left to right, all the way left to zero, all the way right, full power. So that's not really helpful if it's not mixed on your robot you're mm -hmm. going to like either like you know if i go straight up i'm at half power left to right right so i'm not going to drive forward i'm going to drive in circles but if you just rotate this 45 degrees and move up and now up to your hand is like up and to the right to the transmitter so you just hold this you just hold this like this push it straight up and your robot's going to drive forward and to be fair, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about a differential drive mm -hmm. or skid steer kind of robot where you have motors on the left and motors on the right, and this is controlling them. Um, and so you're not, we're not talking about Ackerman steering or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this will suddenly you're all the way up and all the way to the right. So you're providing full power to the left and right channel of yep. your robot and everything else follows suit. You just drive that thing as if it was meant to be helped like that and in a pinch. You have mixing. Totally works. So, or if you're yeah. really good at drifting in your Ackerman steering, maybe you could do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so That's right. mine is a, t a trick I use whenever I can't find my wrench. Uh, we use a lot of M4 hardware in GoBuilda and the seven millimeter wrench is the size for a standard lock nut or a standard nut. 
Now, it just so happens that 8mm Rex is a 7mm flat to flat hex. So, a 7mm hex or an 8mm Rex Sonic Hub or Hyper Hub totally work as an impromptu wrench. So, you can totally drop that over a nut you need tightened or loosened and use it as an impromptu wrench. It's also pretty sweet if you have an application where you need to drive some threaded rod um, or use that kind of like a linear motion setup. I've not built something that does that just yet, but I think it'd be really cool. Now, threaded rods are never going to be as smooth for linear motion as uh, mm -hmm. lead screws. Uh, their uh, threads are designed differently. There's more friction and that's, they're not, just not meant for that application, but yeah. you can make it work on, you have some small scale projects um, or for some reason, uh, you wanted to, you know, have that hub on a threaded rod for yeah. other reasons. Um, yeah, yeah. using it as a shaft. Super edge case, but it works. That That's not a hex nut. That's a 7mm hex or 8mm rex, it's a rex nut. to M4 adapter. <laughs> I bet you didn't know. It's the final segment of the show, the giveaway segment. Mm -hmm. And here's how it's going to work. Uh, today, we're going to go ahead and spin this wheel to decide what it is that we're giving away. And you just have to leave a comment on this video <laughs> and we're going to pick one of the commenters to win. In the next video, we'll tell you who won mm -hmm. and then we'll pick another product and just keep going from there. Yep. So I'm super excited. Let's see what you guys will win. It looks like a joystick. That's so. Right. These are going to be really exciting for your electronics projects. We need to drive a robot around. If you got two potentiometers um, that offer variable resistance, just depending on where that joystick is. These are super cool, very high end joysticks, mm -hmm. uh, high quality uh, potentiometers inside of there. Yep. Uh, if you're building uh, anything where you're making your own like controller of any sort and control panel, these things are awesome. Absolutely. All right. Well, you know, besides leaving a comment to win, you can leave comments to tell us uh, any tips and tricks you have mm -hmm. for our next Bet You Didn't Know segment. Uh, mm -hmm. We'd love to share some user-generated content in there. Absolutely. Uh, if you have any questions uh, you want to ask us, go ahead and drop them in the comments below mm -hmm. or email us uh, tech at servocity.com for tech-related questions. Mm -hmm. And we look forward to seeing you guys in the next episode.